Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought of course that I would talk about this video that I thought would be very particularly interesting. And of course for those of you that have not been paying attention to the boxing world or the boxing news as of recently, you know that there was allegedly supposed to be a rematch between that Averro Spence Jr. and Terrence Bud Crawford at least according to the side of that Averro Spence Jr. And I believe that, at least from what I've been hearing, that there has been certain talks about it. There's just no real big confirmation about whether the fight is going to happen yet or not. But, of course, there's a certain amount of <laughs> debates about it because, of course, for those of you that have not heard the most recent news, Terrence Bud Crawford, he says that he's willing to give Errol Spence Jr. a rematch, but only at 147 pounds. Well, of course, Errol Spence Jr. and I believe Derek James or the Errol Spence Jr. side, they want to have 154 pounds. And I kind of understand both sides. But the video that I'm going to review today is going to be a video, a video by that of Mr. Boxing Eagle. I thought that I would review it because Boxing Eagle always brings a very interesting perspective to the table. Whether I think that he's speaking a little bit more logically or a little bit more emotionally, because he does have a little bit of <laughs> both sides to him, depending on the fighter that he's talking about. And for those of you, of course, that have seen my videos in the past, or for those of you that even have seen Boxing Eagle, you know that he's had a little bit of a problem with that of the Terrence Bud Crawford camp. He even admitted that himself. And of course, he seems to be an Errol Spence Jr. fan. It appears that he's had a little bit of a tough time dealing with the fact that Errol Spence Jr. didn't just lose this fight, but that he pretty much ended up getting dominated. And not only am I going to talk about the potentiality of the rematch and my view of the fight happening at 147 or 154, and in my view, is it a snake move, as many people are calling it on Terrence Bud Crawford's part, to, you know, only have it at 147 and not 154. But on top of that, we're also going to talk about was Errol Spence Jr. the same fighter when he fought Terrence Bud Crawford? Because a lot of people, including Boxing Ego, they're trying to allege and say that, you know, Errol Spence, oh, he wasn't the same fighter. Keith Thurman not too long ago came out and said, well, you didn't really defeat a champion, bro. Uh, he said that, you know, he wasn't really the same fighter. Had that Errol Spence fought Sean Porter or Danny Garcia, he would have lost those fights. That's what Keith Thurman said. That's what Boxing Eagle is also saying. Do I believe that? No, not necessarily. But we're, we're going to talk about that as the video goes along. I just, I just thought that it was a little bit interesting. And Ego always brings up a very interesting perspective, whether I tend to agree with him or not. But let's get straight into it. Let's see what he has to say. Crawford, if you have questions, raise your hand. Terrence, Andreas here from the Sporting News. Uh, just talked to Errol. He said he hopes to get the rematch and he would like to have the rematch at 154 pounds. Are you interested in moving up and wait for the rematch? Or does it have to be at 47? Definitely don't have to be at 47. Like I said, you know... Uh, I'm I'm in a hurt business. 47 was kind of hard for me too. I was already talking about moving up in weight and challenging Charlo. Now you just heard Terrence Bud Crawford say that 47 was kind of hard for me too. And I'm going to guess that he means that it was a little bit hard for him to stay at 147 at this point in time. Um, now fighters get adjusted to the weights a little bit later on, but... You know, I always have a lot of people, whenever they make comparisons, especially with Terrence Bud Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, and both of those fighters are all-time great fighters, but sometimes, at least in my view, they are. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I get these guys that like to trash the other fighter, uh, you know, while trying to uplift the other one, especially a certain amount of the LDBC and new media channels. They love to say, oh, well, take a look at how dominant Terrence Bud Crawford has been, and Canelo lost, you know, uh, two big fights. And although that's true... Uh, one must also understand that Canelo not only has a vastly better resume than Terrence Bud Crawford, but on top of that, Canelo a lot of the times was fighting guys that were bigger and lengthier than him, at least when he started moving up to the 168 and 175 pound weight divisions. Also, certain guys at middleweight were even bigger than him. Gennady Golovkin, Danny Jacobs, all those guys, uh, you know, they were a little bit bigger than Canelo Alvarez. I don't think that Terrence Bud Crawford... At least when you talk about an A-grade level fighter, I don't think that he's really ever fought a true A-grade level fighter that was lengthier or bigger than him. Now, had he fought someone like Jamel Charlo, that might be, you know, an example. But Jamel Charlo, it's no offense against him, but <laughs> I'm not even sure if I would put him quite on the same skill level as a Caleb Plant or a Danny Jacobs. I think that he's very good, but I think that he's benefited from a division 
where it's been relatively weak. That's just my personal view on it. But we'll see. He's still a very good fighter. And we'll see how he does next week, I believe, in that Canelo Alvarez fight. So 54 one b I'll reach it of anything. They would like to have the rematch at 154 pounds. Are you interested? But just to kind of end that conversation about who, in my view, is the greater fighter between Terrence Bud Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, in my view, they're kind of along the same lines. I think a lot of people, when they take a look at the past fighters or the past athletes that, you know, they love to heroize them and they love to, you know, kind of put them on a pedestal and they love to say, oh, there's no way that these certain fighters are above them. And, you know, when I see certain people call Terrence Bud Crawford an all-time great, you know, they'll laugh about it and they'll say, oh, there's no way he's above this guy or this guy. Or when it comes to Canelo, they'll say, oh, there's no way he's above this guy or this guy. When you talk about Terrence Bud Crawford and Canelo Alvarez, but Canelo Alvarez especially, those guys are above the likes of certain fighters like Eric Morales, uh, you know, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera, Juan Manuel Marquez, Migo Cotto, uh, Sugar Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya. Those guys are probably above those guys, especially Canelo Alvarez, because he has the resume to prove it. Now, if you were to put Terrence Bud Crawford somewhat within those same rankings, just because he doesn't quite have the resume as some of the other guys that maybe I mentioned, or as much as a, you know, Canelo Alvarez or something like that, you could, but one could also easily debate that Terrence, at the very least, is within your top 30 fighters of all time. I already have Canelo Alvarez within my top 30 fighters of all time in terms of greatest boxers of all time. One could easily debate that Terrence Bud Crawford is right there. Now, in my view, of course, he has truly only fought one great fighter on his resume. But to be fair, a lot of fighters have only had one or two, maybe even three of the most great fighters on the resume. Even the very good ones or the A-grade contenders oftentimes aren't going to be great. You know, they maybe might be great, but they're borderline great. Like when Canelo Alvarez fought Caleb Plant or, you know, even Danny Jacobs to a degree, those guys were very good to borderline great, but I'm not sure if they were all-time great. You know, now to be fair, I'm not sure if Errol Spence is all-time great, but he at least for sure was great. He was a top 10 pound for pound fighter. But when you talk about the great fighters that Canelo fought, uh, you can, you know, debate a multitude of them. You know, you can have Gennady Golovkin up there, Arasani Laura. You could have Danny Jacobs up there if you wanted to, Miguel Cotto. You could include maybe Caleb Plant or some of the other guys. It depends what you mean by great. Then moving up and wait for the rematch, it doesn't happen. Because there's a difference to me between great, very great, and all-time great. Be at 47. It definitely don't have to be at 47. <laughs> We're all here to talk about her. Hello. We built her so we could get a family plan. Well, with U.S. Cellular, it's just twenty nine ninety nine per line. Was words as we gonna find out right here in this video. We unpack. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now I love it. I love my job. I get paid to entertain y'all, good people. And as far as the haters, yeah. Stay tuned. I got much more for you. Now, it's funny when... Now, there's another fighter. Let's back that up really quick. I love it. I love my job. I get paid to entertain y'all good people. And as far as the haters... Now, as we see right there, you have Roberto Duran and Mikey Garcia. Now, if you want to talk about a fighter that, in my view, even though he was great, he can't be remembered as all-time great, that's Mikey Garcia. And for those of you that have been around my channel long enough, you know that... I've kind of explained this, you know, for a while. Mikey Garcia, even though he was a great fighter, a greatly talented fighter, his resume is vastly lacking. And, you know, when you talk about certain fighters like Terrence Bud Crawford or Canelo Alvarez, the thing that you can kind of say about them is that, you know, maybe not every single fight that we wanted happened, but they at least fought a lot of the guys that were kind of in their path. When you talk about Mikey Garcia, there's <laughs> there's no Jorge Linares on his resume there's no Vasily Lomachenko. There's no Javante Tank Davis or Devin Haney. You know, there's no uh, Terrence Bud Crawford when he was at 140. You know, there's no Yuri Yerkes Gamboa. There's none of those guys. You know, it's no offense against Mikey Garcia, but a lot of the times when it seemed like there was a bigger threat to threaten him in his career, it seemed like he kind of more avoided them or did not fight them. Don't get me wrong. He's still the first ballot Hall of Famer in my view. Uh, but he cannot be remembered, in my view, as a top 50 fighter of all time. At least, I would not put him there. Because his record is just severely lacking. And I understand that he's a four-weight division champion. Uh, but in this era, you have a lot of different, you know, multitude of weight division champions. 
And Mikey, even though in my view he was one of the better uh, weight division guys or one of the better fighters that was a four-weight division champion, when you talk about the best names on his resume, who was really there? Orlando Salido, you know, Adrian Broner, um, you know, you know, Zlatan Sochichning or, you know, whatever that one dude's name was from Montenegro, uh, you know, and, and maybe a couple of others. That's when you know a fighter truly doesn't fight anybody, when you can barely remember any of their names. Not someone like a Canelo Alvarez or, you know, someone like that. Someone that where you can actually name a dozen or more names on their resume. And Terrence Bud Crawford, it's a little bit hard to remember some of the names on his resume. But to be fair, that's not really all his fault because at 35 and at 40, he pretty much fought everyone that he needed to. So I can't blame him too much. Yeah, stay tuned. I got much more for you. Now, it's funny. When I make videos about certain subjects, sometimes you have fans of that fighter, not fans of boxing, but fans of a fighter, and they say stuff like, oh, boxing eco, but please no, why are you making another video? Listen, as a full-time content creator, which has been the case for several years, I am obligated to post with titles and descriptions that, per community guidelines on YouTube, that encapsule what I'll be talking about. So I obviously, this is my job, I abide by those rules, meaning... You can't upload a video without a title. And it's so funny to hear the Bud Buddies cry. They see a video about Terrence Crawford on the channel as it pertains to something I want to talk about on my channel. And they say, oh, not another Terrence Crawford video. <laughs> but literally, the title tells you what the video is about. You don't have to click on it. You're choosing to click on the video because I am your master. And I'm just too hot. We unpack. So without further ado. Well, I could somewhat agree with that to a degree. A lot of the times people come back to, you know, what they're secretly addicted to or because they're secretly a fan. Personally, I like to review Boxing Eagles videos because I don't think that he is uh, the worst commentator in the world. Uh, but of course, within this video, it's going to be the exception because, uh, you know, he can be biased at times depending on a fighter that he does not like. And I think a certain amount of the people are getting frustrated, at least I might be watching his videos, because they realize that he's kind of trying to play this off as Errol Spence was not the same fighter, and now Terrence Bud Crawford, he won't have the fight at 154. Well, it's not really Terrence Bud Crawford's job to have the fight at 154, you know. And you can call him a snake all you want to. You can say that, you know, it's, it's bad ethics, you know, or bad morality of Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, to do that. But, I mean, were we saying this about other fighters? Was Boxing Eagle or a certain amount of these fans saying, well, you know what, Javante Tank Davis is a snake because he has the Ryan Garcia fight at a catchweight. Let that kid fight at a full 140. None of these guys were saying that because they like Javante Tank Davis and they don't give a shit about Ryan Garcia. If it was the other way around, they would not care. Let's talk about it. Now, the clip you heard at the beginning was Terrence Crawford. And that was Crawford immediately after beating Errol Spence and becoming 2X Undisputed. Bravo, you beat him, 2X Undisputed. And it was a very... <laughs> Every time Boxing Ego talks about that, he's like, you know, bravo, congratulations, what, you want a cookie? <laughs> you can tell that this dude, he's a little bit frustrated that Terrence Bud Crawford whooped his favorite fighter's ass. It just is what it is. And once again, he did have a little bit of a problem with the Terrence Bud Crawford camp. Even he admitted that himself. And I'm sorry, but once I heard that, that pretty much explained a lot of the narratives that Ego was trying to put out there. Even though I didn't disagree with some of the things that he was saying, I agreed with some of the stuff that he was saying. But a lot of the stuff you could tell that there was a little bit of extra sauce on why he was saying the things that he was saying. You know, you could tell that there was some sort of issue or fanboyism going on. And I think that a little bit of both were present. Simple question, which seemingly had a simple response from Crawford. Question was something to the effect of, I just talked to Errol Spence. The boxing reporter says, I just talked to Errol Spence right now. He says he would love the rematch. There's a rematch clause in the contract, but he prefers the rematch at 154. Is this a fight that you could do at 54 or would you only do it at 47? Very easy. Boom. Very easy. Terrence Crawford, he fumbled. Now, he didn't fumble in terms of saying... No, he didn't really fumble. He just answered it the most accurate way 
that he wanted to put it out there. Terrence Bud Crawford, I don't think, cares to have the Errol Spence Jr. rematch at 154. I think that Terrence Bud Crawford takes a look at Errol Spence's finished business. I think that he's going to try to move on to the Jamel Charlo fight, maybe the Canelo Alvarez fight, whatever fight is going to come next. You know, uh, he's going to try to move on uh, to whatever is next. I think that he takes a look at an Errol Spence Jr. fight, you know, kind of as a waste of time. He says, listen, I already kicked this dude's ass. You guys kept saying for years upon years upon years that my resume was fake and that, you know, I wasn't fighting nobody. And don't get me wrong, I don't completely disagree with that because, let's be real, uh, you know, people like Jose Benavidez and Idris Kavalaskis and Jeff Horn, you know, and a washed up Amir Khan and a washed up Kell Brook, those are not A-grade level fighters. But at the end of the day, I can get Terrence Bud Crawford's mindset. I do think that there is a little bit of him saying, listen, you guys were hyping up this dude to quote-unquote beat me. He allegedly was the A-side. He allegedly, you know, had this much of a better resume than me. Now I get in the ring with him and I whoop his ass. And now you guys are trying to say that, oh, it needs to happen at a different weight or it needs to happen this way. You know, you guys are trying to tear me down again. So if the rematch happens, fuck that. I'm not having it at 154. I'm the A-side now, uh, you know, and we're going to do it my way. Because if it were up to me, I wouldn't even be having this rematch. I think that's the way that Terrence Bud Crawford is thinking. But I could be wrong. Nothing wrong per se. It's what he said does not coincide with what his team is saying right now. Crawford responded. He said, yeah, we could do the fight at 154. He said that 147 was difficult for me to make too. I was already talking about moving up in weight to fight Jermail. And that's why I can't, <laughs> I can't really give Errol Spence the excuse of, oh, he should have been at 154. I'm sorry. I'm just not buying it. Errol Spence Jr. has been at the welterweight division for what, the past seven years and been on the pound for pound list for at least like the past five years. And I've never heard of any problems of him, you know, being super duper weight drained. Don't get me wrong. I've heard, you know, things about he could clearly be at a higher weight. And I think that even Errol Spence has said in the past that, you know, he wishes he could move up to 154, that he believes that he'll fit better at 154. Yeah, I've heard that, but it's not like Errol Spence is killing himself to get down there. You know, it's not like overall he's like Max Holloway or Conor McGregor when they were trying to make 145 in the UFC or anything. You know, it's not like that. So I just don't know if I can give Errol Spence the excuse. I don't think that the excuse of, oh, he was too weight drained or this would be better at 154. I'm just not buying it. Arlo, so fighting Errol Spence in a rematch at 154 would not be out of reach or anything. And he literally said, if you listen again, if you don't believe me, rewind this track and picture me rolling. The kid with the golden voice is back. The first words out of his mouth were, it definitely don't have to be at 147. I'm in the hurt business. And 47 wasn't the easiest for me to make either. But now, fast forward to the future, your teammate, which you haven't come out and corrected to this video, as of me recording this video, is saying it definitely does matter. And we want to fight Errol Spence only at 147 where people are saying he is drained. Oh yeah, it's a bad look, y'all. Again, the thing is this. People, they get mad at the channel. They get mad at me. That means you mad at the truth. This is not Terrence Crawford AI, where I input some components into chat GPT, and I came out with this simulation of Terrence Crawford's voice saying these things. He's on video. And he said these things. So as a man, I can only hold you to your word. It's like Scarface said, all I have is my word and my balls and I don't break them for nobody. So in terms of the RN real near, this doesn't bode well for Crawford to have clearly, and I do mean clearly, said I will be open to 54 it definitely don't have to be at 147 but now your team is saying it definitely does have to be at 147 and then when i make content about it you got the bud buddies that was crying in there they crying like oh why are you making this video i am holding crawford or anybody else in boxing say it with me accountable 
for what they say. Now, it's not even just a... Well, that's fine, but at the end of the day, what <laughs> what is Terrence Bud Crawford possibly wanting the rematch at 147? What, what does it really have to do, uh, you know, with anything in terms of big news? I think a big part of the reason why people are frustrated of why you're making the video is because they know the connotation behind it, which is that you're going to try to allege that Terrence Bud Crawford is a snake or that, you know, he's clearly going to be trying to limit Errol Spence Jr. when we wouldn't be hearing these standards with other fighters. If it was the other way around and Terrence Bud Crawford had been at 147 for a very long time, you know, and then all of a sudden he gets his ass whooped by Errol Spence, who was Boxing Eagle's favorite fighter or one of his favorite fighters, you know, and then, you know, all these excuses come out about, oh, well, he doesn't look the same or he looked drained. Ego would be saying that that's a whole bunch of bullshit and that's a whole bunch of excuses because we all know what he says when it comes to a fighter that he doesn't like. Oh, accountability, it's we didn't forget. The internet doesn't forget. You know, because remember, when Vasily Lomachenko lost to Devin Haney, even though a lot of people thought Lomachenko won that fight, I don't think that I would really go on that boat. I would say that it was a fight that potentially maybe could have went either way or seven rounds to five going either way. But when it came down to it, you know, remember what Ego said? You know, Lomachenko quit crying. You know, quit crying. Or when it came to other fighters that ended up losing that he did not like, you know, quit crying. You know, they were overrated. <laughs> they were this. But if one of his favorite fighters loses, like Deontay Wilder or Errol Spence Jr., here comes a barrel of excuses. People don't forget. So, even if Crawford, quote-unquote, gets away with it, I am a free thinker and... Well, it's not really getting away with anything. The thing is, is that Terrence Bud Crawford now is the A-side. So, if Errol Spence Jr. wants that of the rematch, more than likely, he's going to have to kowtow to some of Terrence Bud Crawford's demands, period. Because I don't think Terrence Bud Crawford really gives a shit about this rematch. So there might be a possibility that he might try to run Spence's team through the ringer in order just for this rematch to happen. Because if I had to guess, I don't think Terrence Bud Crawford really cares for this rematch. I don't think he sees any point in it. And at the end of the day, I get it. It's freedom of speech. So I can talk about and interpret these ideas. It's public domain. This is not like some leak tape of Terrence Crawford audio. This is all stuff that you guys seen. So, yeah, I'm going to use my channel to conversate about these various things. And especially when they don't add up, I'm going to call it out, you know. So that's where we're at right now. You specifically said it don't have to be a 47. Now you're saying it does have to be. And let me also state this. This may not even be Terrence Bud Crawford because as Eagle did state earlier in the video, Terrence Bud Crawford stated that he might be open in 154. It might just be his team saying that because we all know at times boxers and the team are not on the same page. So we would have to see. But would it surprise me at all if Terrence Bud Crawford once again said, listen, if this rematch is going to happen, we're doing it at 147. You know, would I be surprised? Not at all. At 147. And just in case you missed my previous video where I went over the initial conversation, this is Terrence Crawford, one of his friends, his right-hand man, a fighter, Steve Nelson, right? He said facts, and to all the people out here spreading false narratives, Bud is offering Errol a fight at 147. If he doesn't take it, which we are hoping he doesn't because it's a waste of time, then Bud wants to do something different that hasn't been done and move up three weight classes to beat Canelo. So this is... Terrence Bud Crawford better be careful with that Canelo Alvarez fight because I promise you if Canelo Alvarez, if he's renewed... Uh, you know, and if he ends up beating Jamel Charlo's ass, which I predict Canelo more than likely to beat Jamel Charlo, I just don't know in what fashion he's going to do it because I don't think Canelo is the same level of fighter. I think that Canelo Alvarez, that a few years ago, he was probably an S to A plus level tier fighter. Right now, he's probably about an A minus level fighter. So he's still within that A grade category, but he's not quite the same fighter. So we'll see what ends up happening. But Terrence still better be careful because even an A-minus version of Canelo Alvarez with his weight and his girthiness when it comes down to it or his level of girth, you know, he better be careful because Canelo is going to hands down be the most talented and the most skilled and the smartest boxer that Terrence has ever fought. Definitely the video I played at the beginning, definitely not aging well. So you're basically admitting, your team is admitting that basically Crawford is trying to snake Errol Spence Jr., because I understand formalities, and this is partly Errol Spence's fault because I made a video. He's not really trying to snake to Errol Spence Jr. at all. All he's doing is flexing his A-side level ability. 
uh, you were not complaining when Errol Spence probably was trying to show his A-side level ability. So, I mean, what's the problem here? You know, it is what it is. Are we going to call Devonta Tate Davis a snake because he didn't let Ryan Garcia, you know, fight at a complete 140 pounds or even a little bit heavier? You know, like, come on. Yo, the huge mistake that Errol Spence made, please check that video out. But partly it's Errol Spence's, his fault based on this. It's Errol Spence's fault based on the fact that he was so willing to make the fight that he did anything to make the fight, including, but not limited to, giving up his leverage. And I've talked about this in several videos. This is a huge mistake made on behalf of Errol Spence. Errol Spence admitted before he lost to Terrence Crawford that his own team wanted him to move on because Terrence Crawford had several demands. And it's, it's almost like a relationship. And I'm going to give you guys an analogy. If a girl is dating a guy and he's showing red flags like that he has a bad temper. I found treasure on Timu for less than 10 cents. Don't know where to put the sponge after washing the dishes? Try this little hanging. You just met the dude and you're on the first date, second date, and you see these red flags. That definitely could be an indication of what trouble lies if you continue down this path. You know, so you got to be cognizant of red flags in a relationship. Or, you know, it could be a guy. If a guy's dating a girl and she's super clingy and you just met her, like, how does she have these intense feelings to the point where she's blowing you up and insecure? I don't know really what the fuck Boxing Ego is talking about because bo boxing is not comparable with that of a romantic relationship or anything of a sort. Uh, you know, or a dating relationship. Boxing is a business at the end of the day. And when you talk about business, you know, it, you, you got to think with completely, uh, you know, a business mindset and a logical mind frame. You got to think about the monetary aspect of it and basically with a money type of mind frame. And Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, he's, he's going to turn 36 years old or he already is 36 years old. He doesn't have a whole lot of time left. So at the end of the day, he's like, why the hell do I want to rematch this guy for this full four? You know, they were already trying to put me through the ringer a little bit. At least that's his opinion on it. I don't know if I would agree with that, but that's his opinion on it. You know, uh, people were saying that this dude was better than me and blah, 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 you know, and that he would beat me and all sorts of stuff. I whoop his ass. And then now all of a sudden people are making all these excuses. You know, I have no interest in a rematch. You know, and Terrence, Bud and Terrence Bud Crawford, the way that he's looking at it, he said, if this fight is going to happen, you know, I'm going to make it a little bit of a pain in the ass for you to get the fight. That's the way that I see it. You know, but we'll see. And he wants to know where you're going and things like that. You're just getting to know each other, right? These are huge red flags in a relationship. So the red flag for Errol Spence should have... Because at the end of the day, the boxers, you know, they got to they gotta put money on the table to support their families. You know, it's about legacy. Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll become friends a little bit later on. But right now, you know, both of their careers matter the most. So they're going to, you know, leverage, put the most amount of leverage that they can as much as possible. And you bet your money that if Errol Spence had won that fight, that he would have put the most amount of leverage as much as possible as well been how he had failed negotiations with Terrence Crawford, how difficult in its totality between the two different negotiations it was to make the fight, even though Crawford was a free agent at that space. These should have been huge red flags for Errol Spence that, hey, I might as well just move on with my career. Plus, Crawford knew and I knew and I still thought Errol Spence could prevail because he, you know, he had, he had basically seen challenges in his career. And he's had these ups and downs. So I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford, I think that they both needed each other. Because if that fight did not happen, neither of them would have been remembered as the greatest fighter of their era. At least in my personal opinion. That was a fight that needed to happen. No doubt about it. That was almost on the level of like the Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz level fight. That was on the same level, you know, as, uh, you know, a Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Tommy Hearns versus Sugar Ray Leonard. That's the type of fight that this was. If that fight didn't happen, there was always going to be an asterisk near both of their names, in my personal view. Yes, you could argue that Terrence needed Arrow more than, you know, vice versa. But at the end of the day, they both needed each other. I, I still thought skillfully and, like, stylistically, he could prevail versus Crawford, but it looks like not. But the inactivity, if I knew this and everybody else in boxing knew this, that means Arrow Spence and Crawford knew this.
So Errol Spence, he signed on the dotted line. He agreed to it. So that's on him. But it doesn't change the fact that that was clearly a strategy. The longer the negotiations spread, Crawford already bailed out of the first negotiations to go fight David Avocado. So he was a bit fresher in terms of some ring activity. He was in there with a guy we knew. Yes, which isn't really a bad thing. That's something that Errol Spence should have done. But unfortunately for him, uh, he was not smart enough to do that. And he decided to get in the ring with, I believe, about 400 days off. So that's his fault. I don't blame Terrence Bud Crawford for doing that at all. He did the thing that was smartest for his career. Right now, he's still doing the thing that is the smartest possible thing for his career. I don't blame him whatsoever. They couldn't beat him. David Avocado. So he had a fight in December versus Errol Spence was out a year. Again, we knew this. Errol Spence knew this. But that also means Crawford knew this. So that's just a little sidebar. But all these things, to me, were red flags. He wanted a coin flip. He felt he did fight. I mean, he was saying, I got a hedge fund, you know, check my hedge fund buddies. Then later he says he's glad he didn't take the hedge fund. He was saying that, oh, nobody buys pay-per-view and people are going to fire stick it. I mean, this is this is someone you want to do a pay-per-view with when they're telling you that his, he's saying at least his fan base is, is trying to fire stick it or people in general. That's his perception. But then you got to sell a pay-per-view. It's really no mystery that this fight didn't do over a million pay-per-view buys you know and and that's just the reality of it so all in all there was a lot of red flags and errol spence looked beyond it trying to please the fans but he expected terrence crawford and his team to perhaps move how he moved which is just to be real straight up and down and if you have a gentleman's bet or a gentleman's agreement that it'll be honored but terrence crawford he plays from a different set of rules the omaha rules or whatever where he's like nah I know what I said on stage, but bump that. I got a contract that stipulates otherwise. I get to pick the weight. So I'm going to put you at a weight that actually stifles you. And since you've admitted, Errol Spence, another mistake, Errol Spence admitted that he wants the rematch at 154. They know that. He said that. You know what I mean? Errol Spence is maybe perhaps too candid and too nonchalant, too open. Sometimes it's the art of war. Um, Sun Tzu, you know, where... You, you want to keep the the chinks in your armor masked or somehow hidden because that becomes a passageway. Yes, I believe the quote is, is that when you appear weak or when you are weak, appear strong, uh, you know, and when you're strong, appear weak, something like that, you know, to always catch your opponent off guard or to survive as long as you possibly can, you know, something like that. And a weakness that can get exploited, and that's literally what's happening right now. You had Terrence Crawford... He's 2X undisputed, still undisputed and undefeated. And he's on top of the world. He feels on top of the world. And again, all the red flags are now showing their face again that he's not the easiest to deal with. His former promoter also <laughs> hipped the world of boxing to this. And that was Bob Arum. He said, this guy's not... Well, you can say that about Bob Arum all you want to. But, you know, a lot of these guys, they love to use certain points whenever it favors them against a certain fighter that they don't like. But these are also the same guys that are claiming that Bob Arum, you know, that he's <laughs> that he's a dude that is racist and doesn't treat black fighters fairly and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, maybe there's an argument for that. I don't know. Bob Arum has been known to not only screw over black fighters in the past, but pretty much every fighter that he's ever had in his career. So it is what it is, uh, you know, at least according to, you know, the history. But, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, uh, I just think that that's very interesting that Boxing Eagle is bringing that particular point up easy to deal with and to drive this point home and really prove it here's some more from team crawford he's responding to some fan he said how is that guessing i said we're as in us as a team he which is obviously meaning terrence crawford doesn't want to waste time fighting spence again i don't care how drained y'all claimed he was as a fighter myself i know it doesn't make that much of a difference where you get whitewashed so this is explicitly indicate. Well, here's here's the thing for me, because boxing you is probably going to try to make the point and say, oh, are you saying that the weight drain doesn't matter? Blah, blah, blah. And weight drains do matter. You know, only even slight weight drains matter. But here's the problem. Errol Spence has been at the welterweight division now for the past several years. He's been a champion there now for the past several years. He's been there for a very long time. He was extraordinarily dominant in his last performance, which was just a little over a year ago before this fight ended up happening. Uh, you're telling me that he was that badly drained to the point to where it was that much of an ass whooping? I'm sorry, I'm just not buying it. 
that Team Crawford is aware that there's this big notion that Errol Spence was drained because he just mentioned it. He said, I don't care how drained y'all claim he was. But then again, Crawford is not willing to test this theory because he's trying to fight Errol only at 47, despite the video I played at the beginning where he said why, otherwise. Why the hell should Terrence Bud Crawford fight Errol Spence Jr. at 154? Once again, that, that's not Terrence Bud Crawford's job. If Errol Spence Jr. ended up winning this fight, and if Errol Spence fit more at 147 instead of 154, you think Boxing Eagle would give a shit? No, of course not. He's only bitching and moaning because, you know, he has a problem with Terrence Bud Crawford's camp, and he's a little bit upset and salty. And he's crying because Terrence Bud Crawford ended up whooping up on his favorite fighter, period. The, the, these excuses would not be coming out, uh, you know, if that of Terrence Bud Crawford lost the fight, period. And that's why it looks bad. And don't get me wrong. That's not me saying that Errol Spence maybe would not fit better at 154. You know, that's not me saying that the layoff was not a little bit of a factor. But other than that, like, please... People are trying to say all this shit about, oh, Errol Spence doesn't look like the same fighter and, you know, he wasn't a champion. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know, like, I don't understand. Like, what Errol Spence were you watching in the fight? Because every single fault that i seen Errol Spence make in this fight were basically the same amount of faults that i seen him making in the other fights. It's just that there was not a fighter that could calculate and basically capitalize on all those mistakes like what a Terrence Bud Crawford could. Terrence, once again, is an S-tier level fighter at his best. Spencer never fought someone like that before. Because you had a gentleman's agreement. And on top of that, just every category, that <laughs> every category, Terrence was basically able to beat him in. If you were to create a fighter to perfectly beat on Errol Spence Jr., it would be someone like Terrence Bud Crawford. Quick feet, quick hand speed, great power, you know, uh, great distance, you know, uh, judgment when it comes down to it, you know, great adaptability, fights in more of a multitude of ways. You know, Terrence was basically meant and bred to beat someone like Errol Spence Jr. You meant that 54 was definitely something you were open to, and now you're saying you wanted at 47, but then you're admitting that you've heard the complaints that Errol Spence was drained, and you're trying to keep him there, and then you're openly admitting as a team you are hoping that he doesn't take the fight because it's a waste of time. Literally said him. Yes, and I don't blame Terrence Bud Crawford's team. You know, he's 36 years old. Why the hell does he want to waste <laughs> why the hell does he want to waste his time on another rematch that's probably going to end up just the same way? And on top of that, a fighter and, you know, his fan base, they basically tried, you know, to allege that he wasn't fighting anybody. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that he was. But <laughs> at the end of the day, at least not fighting, you know, the majority of the time a lot of elite fighters. But in Terrence's mind, once again, like I said earlier, you know, now that I beat this dude, you guys are making excuses once again. You know, I don't really care for this rematch, but if this rematch does happen, I'm going to make it hell for that team. Multiple tweets. He doesn't want to waste time fighting Spence again, but you have a contractual obligation. And again, you're a man. And as a man, people are going to hold you to your word. Crawford, in the other interviews, like him publicly, he was saying, yeah, I'll honor my, I'll honor my contract in this, that, and the third. But now it sounded like he has a change of heart. And he's trying to put it right but was it really in the contract that the rematch had to happen in 154 anything that's not in a contract you know whether you, you know you go by someone's word or not it's your own fault at the end of the day uh if you if you uh don't put it in the contract all right period the weight hoping that errol spence will forfeit like yo i can't make the weight but then you're saying he's errol spence can make the fucking weight please Give me a goddamn break on this. The man has been there for like the past, I don't know how many years. The man was phenomenal in 2022 against your Danis Ugas. Had one of the best performances of his career. Made a lot of people think that Earl Spence was really on the way to a comeback and going to possibly knock out Terrence Bud Crawford. And then all of a sudden, all these excuses about he can't make the weight anymore. Get the hell out of here. I drain because you wouldn't get whitewashed. Listen to what I just said. I just dropped the gym. That's a bar. Listen again. How can you claim that Errol Spence is not weight drained, but you're trying to have it at the lowest weight when he just told you that he wanted it at 54 because, you know, for I mean, why would he want it at 54? It's kind of common sense. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to deduce why he would want it at a higher weight and keep saying that, right? So you're saying basically he's not drained because even if you were drained, it wouldn't have looked like that. But then you're trying to keep it at the lowest weight despite what Terrence Crawford said about fighting him at 54 so you're claiming he's not drained
but then you don't want to test that theory at 154 by fighting him. Once again, that's not Terrence Bud Crawford's job. Terrence Bud Crawford is now the A side. If Errol Spence Jr. wanted this fight to happen at 154, he should have either A, moved up, or B, put that in the contract. He didn't do either. So boo-hoo. And you're saying it's a waste of time. None of which Crawford was saying before. He was saying that, oh, I'll honor the contract and this, that, and the third. So you can see... Right, but the fight being at 154 was not in the contract. So, you know, you can say that all you want to, but, you know, and I'm sure Terrence Bud Crawford... You know, I think that he said that he wouldn't mind doing it at 154. But right now, Terrence Wood Crawford, I think it's especially because he was so dominant, you know. And I think that, you know, just just this fight being in the making for like several years. And Terrence, you know, I think he expected it to be a little bit more competitive. Had this, excuse me, had this fight been a little bit more competitive, I don't think that Terrence would mind having it at 154. But the fact that he whooped his ass so bad. And here he's, he's hearing these people. Once again, keep in mind that Terrence Bud Crawford already believes that people are trying to tear down his career, you know, pretty much in totality. Now that he hears a lot of these people, you know, saying that this was the guy that was going to beat you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I just whooped his ass. And then now all of a sudden he's allegedly drained. You know, no, fuck that. I don't have to rematch his ass. And, you know, so if I do rematch him, you know, we're having it at 147. Because I don't have to rematch you in the first place. So if you're rematching me, you know, when it comes down to it, we're going to do it my way. How this is not age well, the initial... Or maybe perhaps Terrence will have to rematch him. 